Hey there YouTubers, it's me again. Um, I am about to show you a video on the spike stitch and the crab stitch. Or not crab stitch, ha! Ah, this is the crow's foot stitch. They're all named after animals, what can I say? Um, I hope you enjoy the following video and I'm glad to be back sharing videos with you. Um, so yeah, enjoy! Hi there YouTubers, it's been a long time since I have been here. <laughs> Um, I apologize for being away for so long, but it's just kind of the way it happens when you're working a full-time job and um, have a lot of things to do at home as well. So I wanted to come back and do another tutorial for you since the last time I did a tutorial was last summer. Uh, I thought you guys could use a treat. Um, so today I'm going to do the spike stitch as well as the crow foot stitch, which is a variation on the spike stitch. Um, I'm going to show you the spike stitch first, since we need to learn how to do that before we can go on and do a more complicated um, crochet pattern, such as a crow's foot stitch. So I'm going to move that out of the way. So this one, I'm just using worsted weight cotton yarn. I'm using a G hook, and just going to go across uh, 12 stitches. What I did here was I did my foundation chain of 12 stitches. I crocheted about four rows in the natural tone, and then I did a spike, an alternating spike stitch all the way down this row, and then I came back and did some more rows in natural so I can show you how to do um, the spike stitch. So here we go. In your first stitch here, you're going to do a normal single crochet. And then, for your second stitch, you're going to go down one row. So since I'm working back and forth, my holes should line up. So this stitch, which I am replacing with a spike stitch, um, this is the hole that I'm going to use. So you just do a normal single crochet, however you want to be a little bit more loose with your tension. So insert your hook, yarn over and pull through. And you see I'm bringing it up a little bit before I yarn over and pull through both of the loops on my hook. So you can already see that it's kind of created a little bit of a more dramatic spike into the contrasting color. So for the next one, I'm just going to do another single crochet. So now I have a single crochet, a spike stitch, and a single crochet. For this next one, I will do another spike, as you can see. This is the stitch I am replacing, so I'm going to go one down, one row down into this hole. Insert my hook into that hole, yarn over and bring it up loosely, yarn over and bring through both loops on the hook. So single crochet, again, I'm replacing this stitch with a spike stitch, so I'm going to go down into this hole right here. Insert your hook, yarn over, bring up loosely, yarn over, bring through both loops on the hook. So I'm just going to go down, single crochet, spike stitch down here, bring it up loosely, bring through both loops on the hook. Single crochet, and then spike stitch into this loop here. Single crochet, and then I'm ending with a spike stitch. Um, if this is an actual project, what I would do is have an uneven number rows or number of stitches, so an odd number of stitches. That way, I end on a single crochet. I just think that looks a little bit tidier. However, for this purpose, I'm just going to go in and do a spike stitch, and then chain one to bind off. So as you can see here. You can use it as a decorative edging on a piece, or you can use it within the work itself. Uh, I think it makes a really interesting pattern when you use it inside the work, um, especially if you use extremely contrasting colors. Uh, I thought this natural and green tone was good for summer. Um, it would make a great addition to the brim of a hat, especially if you're making a sun hat. Um, you can just do this along the outside edge, and I think it would look really great. 
Um, so now that we've gotten the spike stitch down, um, and if you haven't, don't worry, you can just replay this part of the video and um, keep looking at how I do it to do the spike stitch. Um, but I'm going to set this one aside. I'm going to bring this swatch over. So this stitch is called the crow's foot stitch. Um, as you can see, it's kind of a, a three spike stitch combo. Uh, the tricky thing about this particular stitch is that you're working in um, stitches that are a little bit far away from where your stitch is going to end up. That doesn't quite make sense um, when I say it that way, as I just made myself sound a little weird, but let me show you how to do it and then it'll all make sense. So you see we have our three stitches here. We're going to work this over three stitches. For the first stitch, you're going to do an extended single crochet. So you're going to go into the third stitch from the hook and start your single crochet. You see that I'm leaving this loop really long um, because we're going to need that extra space so it doesn't buckle in on, our, on itself. Yarn over, pull through both loops on the hook, and then we're going to do our spike stitch. So it kind of gets a little lost, but this is the middle stitch of that three stitch set. And we're going to go one row below that to do our spike stitch. So insert your hook in that hole, yarn over, pull through, extended loop for that so you can actually um, have enough space and enough uh, looseness to keep the tension properly. Yarn over, pull through those hooks, and then in your first stitch, which is where my um, row starts, you're going to put your hook in that stitch, yarn over, pull through that stitch, yarn over, and pull through both loops on the hook. Um, again, if I was doing an actual project with this, I'd probably start with a single crochet um, and then do the crow foot stitch because the trio of stitches twists on itself, um, which can kind of warp the fabric a little bit. If you do do a larger project with this stitch, I would recommend blocking it after you wash it um, or iron it so it doesn't wrinkle. So I'm going to go into the next three stitch set so you can see one, two, three. And to begin the crow foot stitch, I'm going to do an extended single crochet into the third stitch. So I'm going to put my hook through the stitch, yarn over, pull through, leaving it long, yarn over, pull through both loops on the hook. Then for the spike stitch, I'm going to look for my middle stitch, which is this one right here which is the stitch immediately to the right of that single crochet that I did. I'm going to go down a row to do the spike stitch, insert my hook down into that space, yarn over and pull through that loop, yarn over, pull through both loops. Then the only stitch that's left is this first stitch um, where I'm going to insert my hook and do an extended single crochet. As you can see, this one's a little bit more apparent, um, where you have that little cross of the stitches, which kind of makes a little triad, if you will, uh, hence the name crow's foot, because of that shape right there. So I'm going to do the next three stitches, insert my hook into the third stitch, bring a long loop through, pull it through both loops on my hook, do a spike stitch in the stitch immediately to the right. So here's the single crochet that I'm going to be replacing. I'm going to go down one row, insert my hook, yarn over, bring it through a long loop, yarn over, and pull through both loops. This stitch right here is the only stitch left that I haven't done yet. So I'm going to just insert my hook, yarn over, pull through a longer loop, yarn over, pull through both loops. So these are really just modified single crochets. Uh, so it's a pretty simple stitch, but it really lends itself to be a beautiful addition. So let me go through these uh, two more times. I'm going to go to this third 
stitch from my last previous set, insert my hook, do an extended loop, yarn over, bring it through both loops. And then to the stitch to the immediately to the right of that last stitch, go down one row, insert my hook through that space, yarn over, pull through a long loop, yarn over, pull through both loops. Again, this is that last stitch that I haven't touched yet. I'm going to insert my hook, yarn over, a little bit longer loop again, yarn over, pull through that loop. One last time, I'm going to insert it to this last stitch. I did a foundation row of 15, went up about 5 rows this time, did a crow's foot stitch, 5 rows, I'm going to do another crow's foot stitch. So I'm going to insert my hook into this last stitch, yarn over, bring out a long loop, yarn over, pull through both loops. Immediately to the right, down one row for the spike stitch, insert my hook into that space, yarn over, bring out a long loop, yarn over, pull through both loops, and then I'm going to go into that last stitch that I haven't touched yet, insert my hook, yarn over, pull out a long loop, yarn over, and put it through all of the loops. If you were to use this on a project as an edging, um, I would suggest doing what I'm about to do, which is start another row, turn it, and then crochet across. So I did 15 stitches, so I'm going to just do 15 single crochets. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this is sometimes a problem um, because with the crow's foot stitch, since the stitches are twisting in on themselves, it's sometimes hard to find the last few single crochets, or the spaces to do a single crochet. So right here I'm the third from the end, second from the end, which I think I just did a front loop only, or back loop only, unfortunately. And then the last stitch, which that's why it's really important to make the um, those loops a little bit more loose, um, otherwise you can't really find the top of the stitch anymore. So as you can see, it makes just a lovely little um, triad or a trio of stitches that kind of, it reminds me of a rosemary sprig. Um, so it's, it's just a great way to add a little bit more zest to a project, however it's very simple. Uh, that way it doesn't take away from the whole project if you choose to do it on a garment or something. Uh, that's a larger project. Um, it's just going to add a little bit more detail, but keep it simple. Um, so here's the crow's foot stitch, and here's the spike stitch. Thank you for watching, and I really hope uh, that I'll be able to get more videos out sooner. I have a few ideas um, that I would like to implement onto this channel. Uh, I also plan on bringing in some knitting. Um, which, you know, kind of scares me because I'm not much of a knitter. Uh, and some weaving, since I am a new weaver. Um, kind of just becoming a pretty big fiber artist. Uh, not so much like I'm famous, but like I, I'm working hard at becoming um, well-versed in all of the different fiber arts. So, uh, leave your comments below or your questions. I try to... Um, answer them pretty quickly. In fact, actually, last comment that I got was what kind of project would you use for, I believe it was the bullion stitch, um, which is kind of a puff stitch. Um, if you remember, I don't remember exactly which video, I think it's number five or six with the popcorn bobble and bullion stitches. Um, the bullion stitch would be kind of good for a scrubby or anything that you really need a lot of texture. Um, if you use a slightly bulky yarn out of 100% wool um, or 100% cotton, something that's not flammable, um, you could make a nice um, pot cozy or uh, a placemat 
um, to keep hot foods on because that bullion stitch will raise the fabric a little bit more and create um, some space between your table or your surface and whatever hot food is cooking. Um, so yeah, uh, leave your questions and comments below, subscribe to my channel if you liked this, and um, you can also go to my Facebook, which is just facebook.com slash Benjamin Crudwig. I post a little bit more frequently there since it's quicker. Um, but yeah, I hope you enjoy, and I will be talking to you all soon. Bye.